Hey everybody, this is Terry. I wanted to let you guys know what was what's been going on for the last several months. Uh, I think on my last video, I had my green Z71 in here, uh, the 93, and I put a uh, had just put a fuel pump and a fuel tank in and got it running, and was having an issue with some of the speakers. Well, all of the speakers in it. Uh, what I ended up doing on that was I ended up ordering all new speakers through crutchfield.com and then taking a day and literally taking the entire interior out of that truck with the exception of the headliner to replace the speakers. And that was actually what it was. That was what was wrong with it, uh, was the speakers. I thought it was really unusual that they would all stop working, but that's what had happened. So. After I got that done, I drove that truck for several weeks just to just to drive it, you know, put several tank fulls of fuel through it, make sure it was going to run all right and didn't have no injector issues or anything like that. And uh, I didn't. So when I was done with that, I ended up getting my 78 out and driving it uh, for several weeks and several tank fulls of fuel. And then when that one was done, then I got Julie's car down and I did the same thing with it. I washed it though. It, it was dirtier than heck. So took it up to the car wash, checked oil, made, checked the air pressure and tires. You know, I did some maintenance type stuff and ended up driving it for several weeks just to get some fuel through it as well. Uh, so doing all that took probably about a month and a half, month, month and three quarters. To do uh, I don't know if the, the the gas in this the are in the vehicles in this garage I think is it was in better shape than what was in my Z71 I don't know if it has something to do with the fact that uh, this garage is climatized and the other one isn't and there's constantly hot and cold cycles going on over there I don't know if that has anything to do with it or not uh, but it kind of seemed like the gas and these two guys was in better shape than the gas that came out of that green truck. Now, granted, that green truck hadn't been drove in eight years, but I don't know, it is what it is. So, anyhow, now my Model A. I think on my last video I was working on a passenger door for it. Well, I had a I had a, a skin a door skin for this truck that I had bought, and it was kind of expensive. It was a hundred eighty five dollar door skin, and it come from the top of the belt line clear down. But the problem that I had with it was it was it was really kind of thin, like most door skins are. But it was really kind of thin, and it the the contour was right up in through here because the belt line was holding it to the shape it needed to be and it was right down here because this bead was holding it to the shape it needed to be but out here in the middle around in here it got really flat I mean way flat so I was like well I haven't really gained anything because the what my, my door that I had currently the skin I had on it currently was really flat right in here so I felt if I put that door skin on, all I would be doing is moving my Bondo from here to here. So I was kind of bummed out about that. You know, I, I don't have money falling out my butt, but I really thought that that door skin would be okay. And when I actually got it, I was a little bit disappointed in it. <clears throat> so I stepped back from working on a truck and I scoured the internet and looked for other options for this door. Uh, got on the ham, got on eBay. I was actually looking at buying another door for it, but you know, the, the doors for these don't just fall out of the sky. So when you find one, you know it's, and you know you can tell by the pictures that it's actually a good door. They're not willing to give it away. Even junk door you'll spend 500 and some dollars for. You know, so, and then this door, on top of that, the inner structure of this door has been heavily modified to accept my, my door panels and armrests and all that. So, anyhow, long story short, 
I got on eBay and I was looking around and I, I come across this company here. This, uh, let's see if you can see it. Oga A and T reprodu reproduction parts are in Ohio. And I found them on eBay and they had in their description they descri described this part as one that was stamped and it wasn't the thin gauge sheet metal that the other one I had bought was. It was actually, according to them, the original gauge uh, steel that the door was made out of and it was stamped. So I was like, well, I'll give that a try. It was 80, I think it was $85. Uh, and uh, like, I don't know, $20 shipping or something. Okay, but this, this skin here stops but just below the belt line. So what I did was I measured around on this and I didn't actually take uh, the full skin off to see if I could wrap it at the front and back like you know normally you do it with a door skin. I have situations that are different than what most people that have a Model A have. I've cut in door jams so I, I now instead of having a door that overhangs like that I actually have a door gap at the front and the back of the door. So my situation was a little bit different. What I ended up doing was I did measure this just for the heck of it, just to see if, if I was going to put this on a normal situation Model A, if I could actually wrap it front and back. And I had my some scales out, and I don't. I think I was about five or ten hundred short of being able to do that. So there would have been a little bit of work involved if somebody was going to wrap it all the way front and back. But anyway, back to my story. I come in here, since I already had a gap here and at the front, I come in here and I cut this 3 eighths of an inch in all the way down here. And then I come down a half inch from the lower bead and cut it all the way across there and did the same thing over here, 3 eighths all the way down. Peeled this off, cut the spot wells underneath here and got rid of that. And then I fit the new door skin that I got from Ohio the people in Ohio the Oga A and T parts and fit it on here, notched it out for the hinges here and here and then I did wrap the bottom and as thick as this was it took a torch to massage it around like it's supposed to be so that you can see how that was so, what's going to happen now is I'm going to come in here and I'm going to finalize all my gaps. Make sure the gaps are what I want them to be and they, they look pleasant and all that. I'm going to finalize the gaps on the door, both doors, the hood, the hood sides. Um, I'm still trying to figure out what I want to do here. I, originally my intention was to come in here and seam seal this area across here and along with this on both sides of that. Now I'm thinking I may end up coming back in here and carefully welding this all the way around and then filling it with a little bit of uh, fiberglass reinforced bondo and a finger, finger it. So I think that's what may happen with that. Uh, but once I get my gaps the way I want it then I can start moving forward and on some other stuff that I need to do. I'm thinking I'm gonna open up the gaps a little bit more here because these these hood sides are very dangerous as far as paint when it comes to installing them because you have the fender here and you got paint here, paint here, paint there so it's kinda if you kinda not paying attention to what you're doing you're gonna dick some stuff up so I may open these up a little bit farther than what they already are. As long as they're even, that's okay. And they make a little rubber deal that I can put on here to kind of help with that. These originally I had bought uh, handles to go on here, but I don't think I'm going to put them on because I think that would even increase the risk of hitting the fender. So I'm going to leave those off. So anyway, that's what has to happen next. 
and then I will be taking it back apart, pull all of the wiring and the heating and air conditioning out. Uh, all the electrical wiring will come out. I'll box all that up, take it downstairs. The overhead console will come out, and I'll take it downstairs. In fact, I won't probably do anything to the overhead console at all right now. I'll probably just take it down, take it out and take it downstairs and leave it together. And then once the truck is painted and I've got it maybe back to this point here, I'll pull that out of the basement and take it apart, paint it real quick and throw everything back in it. There's quite a bit going on up there, uh, even though it doesn't really look like it. But I'll put the motor with the transmission on furniture dollies and set it off to the side and bag it. The hood and the hood sides will hang to paint. The grill shell will hang to paint. Uh, I'll have to make an assembly to hold. Now, my running board and splash apron and fender are all one, one deal now. So I'll make a, a long stand for that that's on wheels so I can pick up the driver's side and the passenger side. And then they can be body worked and, and surfaced and primed and all that stuff uh, on the stand and not come off until it's a done deal, ready to go back on the truck. The cab will go back on its cart, the bed will go back on its cart, hang the tailgate. Uh, haven't figured out on the doors yet, may paint the back sides of the doors and then mask it off and tape the exterior, not, not really sure yet. Uh, I'll make a stand for these fenders. Um, the roll pan, it'll be just painted on a set of saw horses. Uh, but once I get the truck apart, then I can start the task of finishing up all of the welding that has to be done on the chassis. Yeah, there's m millions of holes that have to be drilled in there for like wiring clips and stuff like that. Stuff to hold stuff up out of the way. Uh, Everything, everything's basically, even the motor, right down to the motor mounts are just tacked on. I mean, they're not even, they're not fully, they're welded, they're tacked enough to, to, to be safe and hold what it's meant to hold, but it all needs to be finished welding. There's some slots that need to be elongated where the fuel lines pass through the frame. I don't know if you can see that back in there. Let me see if I can lay down. But some of this stuff has to be, I just kind of guessed at what was going on and I need to give it a little bit more clearance. So anyhow, yeah, those are have to be elongated and there's just a lot of stuff down here that needs to be done. That's a new fuel pump. That other one didn't last very long. You buy it in a fuel injection kit. They send you all the stuff and they, the cheapest fuel pump on the planet. Oh well, so anyway, anyway, I just want to check in with you guys and let you know what I was, what I was up to, so I can't hardly believe it's almost uh, Thanksgiving, hope everybody's having a good year so far, I surely am, so anyway guys, take care, take it easy, bye.